Over the last few months, voice assistant integration on headphones has become increasingly popular. It all started with the Bose QC35s. Now Sony's entire headphone lineup now support both Google Assistant and Alexa voice assistant integration. And Apple's latest AirPods and PowerBeats Pro now even have always listening Siri. So voice assistant integration on headphones is definitely here to stay. And adding voice assistant integration is the main focus on JBL's latest crop of ANC headphones. So today we're going to check out the new JBL Live 650 BTNCs. Overall they're okay, but I wish they would have done more. The new JBL Live 650 BTNCs is nothing more than a slightly refreshed version of the JBL E 650 BTNCs. So if you're considering picking these headphones up, just make sure you're getting the latest and greatest version. The Live 650 BTNCs have a retail price of $200, but I actually got these on sale for $130, which is definitely going to play a big part in how I feel about these headphones. So if you want to pick these headphones up or any of the other headphones mentioned in this video, be linked down below. Just like before, these headphones come included with a carrying pouch. And just like before, these headphones have great build quality. These headphones can be laid down flat or totally collapsed. They're fairly lightweight, and when you flex their headband, there isn't any worrisome cracking or squeaking. These are a pair of headphones I would have no problem roughing around a bit. Now, the entire headband is covered in a fabric mesh similar to JBL speakers, and the rest is just plastic. And when it comes to the leatherette on their ear cups, it doesn't feel half bad either. I really want to stress that build quality on these headphones is great. But when it comes to fit, for me, these are not the most comfortable headphones out there. Now, I know fit is subjective, so this definitely isn't going to apply to everyone. But there are some things I want to point out about how these headphones fit. Now, first off, the headband clamping force on these headphones is very easy to adjust. So, they are technically big head approved. But my first issue with these headphones is the range of motion of their ear cups. They swivel just fine, but they don't pivot as much as other headphones with a conventional yoke design. So, for me, the 650 BTNCs do apply a little more pressure on the top portion of my ear instead of applying an even amount of pressure all around, which is what you want. But my other issue with these headphones is that your ear cups are pretty cramped. Even though the ear cups on the 650 BTNCs are deep, they aren't as spacious as the ear cups on the Audio Technica SR50 BTs, and they definitely aren't as spacious as the ear cups on the Sony Watcha 700N. So, personally, I don't think these are the most comfortable headphones out there because of how they rest on your head and because of their cramped ear cups. And, like I've said in the past, fit is the most important thing to take into consideration when picking up a pair of headphones. Personally, I think the Audio Technica SR50 BTs should fit most people just fine, but if you need super spacious ear cups, then I would spring for the Sony Watcha 700Ns. But putting aside my subjective feelings about how these headphones fit, objectively, these headphones do perform fairly well. Now, first off, these headphones are great for watching videos because they have zero latency across the board, whether you're using an Android or Apple device. But from what I can tell, these headphones are only using the SBC codec. There's no AAC, no AppDAC, and there's definitely no LDAC because LDAC is a Sony product. But JBL also claims that these headphones can be connected to two devices at the same time. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't actually manage to get it to work. Ultimately, it's not a big deal, but take that as you will. But more importantly, the Live 650 BTNCs have an advertised battery life of 30 hours with ANC turned off and an advertised battery life of 20 hours with ANC turned on. And for $200 headphones in 2019, a 20-hour battery life with ANC turned on is respectable. But since this is mostly a hardware refresh, I would have really liked to have seen these headphones be upgraded from micro USB charging to USB-C charging because a lot of headphones in 2019 are finally starting to come out with USB-C charging. But like I mentioned earlier, the main upgrade on the JBL Live 650 BTNCs is the addition of voice assistant integration. And you can choose whether you want to use Google Assistant or Alexa. Personally, I find Google Assistant to be more useful than Alexa. 
system. Now, the way that you interact with your voice assistant is by using the new touchpad found on the left ear cup. You can simply tap to get a readout of your notifications, or you can press and hold to talk to your voice assistant like this. It's 9.36 p.m. You don't have new notifications right now. Turn on the studio lights. Okay, turning three lights on. Now, personally, I really like that JBL has added a dedicated touchpad for interacting with your voice assistant because you can still do other things like skip through your music or manually being able to toggle your ANC on or off. Now, I know this sounds simple, but you'd be surprised at how many other headphones haven't managed to get this right, namely Sony and Bose. But my problem with JBL's new touchpad is that it is extremely sensitive. Every time I put these headphones on or readjust them, Google Assistant gets activated, and I've even gotten some phantom presses as well. They're rare, but they've happened. But I think JBL can fix this sensitive touchpad issue through a firmware update. And also, you can just not use a voice assistant on these headphones, period. But when it comes to the active noise cancellation on these headphones, it's kind of a mixed bag. For starters, the ANC on these headphones managed to block out more noise than the ANC on both the Audio-Technica SR50BTs and the Sony Watcha 700Ns. And the ANC on the Live 650BT and Cs doesn't have a lot of cabin pressure, which is good. But just so you can see for yourself, we're going to jump into an ANC test. Like you may have just seen, the JBL Live 650 BTNCs managed to block out the most amount of noise here across the board. But unfortunately, the ANC on the 650BTNCs really does affect the way these headphones sound. Specifically, the soundstage on these headphones gets super narrowed and instrument separation isn't as good when ANC is turned on. Now, it's pretty common for the soundstage on ANC headphones to get a little narrowed when their ANC is turned on. But the degree at which it's happening on the 650BTNCs is very high. So if you want to get the best sound quality out of these headphones, you got to use them with their ANC turned off. Now, when it comes to listening to music with these headphones, you can easily customize how these headphones sound through their app. But definitely, these headphones are geared towards people who like using a neutral sound signature. If you max out the bass on these headphones, they have a good amount of kick, but it's definitely not going to be enough to satisfy a bass head. But to get technical, the bass on these headphones doesn't bottom out, and the highs stay crisp. Instrument separation and soundstage is decent, but again, keep in mind, that's with a ANC turned off. Personally, I would only use ANC on these headphones if you absolutely need to. And finally, here's the microphone test. Personally, I wouldn't take a lot of phone calls with these headphones because there is a lot of echoing and peaking going on. But this audio clip is being recorded by the microphones found on the JBL Live 650 BTNCs. So, you can be the judge of that. So, overall, personally for me, the JBL Live 650 BTNCs don't rank all that high on my list. From a subjective standpoint, I don't think these are the most comfortable headphones out there because of how they rest on your head and because of their cramped ear cups. And from an objective standpoint, even though these headphones manage to block out more noise than a lot of other $200 ANC headphones out there, they do so at the expense of sound quality. And also, there are a few other things to nitpick, like the lack of high quality codecs like Aptex and AAC, the lack of USB-C charging in 2019, and the complete lack of an ambient mode. 
Personally, I can't recommend picking these headphones up for $200, but if they're on sale, then maybe you should try them out. But personally, I think that if you're looking for a great pair of $200 ANC headphones, then I highly recommend the Audio-Technica SR50BTs, and if you're looking for a deal, then I recommend the Sony Wetcha 700Ns. If you made it this far, I guess you enjoyed the video, so hit that like button and get subscribed. It helps out more than you realize. If you want to pick any other products up mentioned in this video, those will be linked in the description down below, and you can also support the channel by checking out the merch store. But other than that, I'll catch you next time.